Hey everyone, it's October 10th and you are here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I hope everyone's having a good day. And um, as I always say, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind. And of course, cameras on, off, we don't care here. We don't care. You're welcome to chat with us in the chat if you don't wanna turn your mic on. Like however you wanna interact with us um, is great. That's perfect. We would, we would love whatever makes you happy. That makes us happy as well. Here's the um, here's the agenda. Oh, here's about Cincinnati chili. If you would like to know, here's a picture of it. We were just talking about this. Yeah, read that, and then you'll 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 know all about it. Here's the link in case you need to know more later after the meeting. Um. Yeah, so if you haven't added your name to the chat, I mean to the agenda, to the chat, to the agenda, that would be great. You don't have to, though, if you don't want to. Uh, yeah. Bowl and, how do you pronounce this? You got, is it bole or bowl? Bowl. Hi, Miss Beth. Bole. Bole. It's bole and fish. Bole and fish. Bole and fish. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is this? Should I Google it? Oh yes, you can. It's essentially um so it's like ripe plantain and you know roasted fish and a sauce with um red oil and stuff. It's really nice. So once you say bole and fish, everybody knows this is from Nigeria. Yummy, yummy. Yes, you should try sometime. I I shall. I shall. Ruth and I had a big <laughs> conversation about the meat pies. Also, Nigerian meat pies is that that's also a thing, right? Yes, super nice, super nice. But spicy. I mean, our foods are very spicy, kind of. It's normal to our tongue, but it might just be spicy for you. So. Just in a warning there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be way too spicy for me. 100%. I'm the I'm the person that requests the spice level one. That's me. I, I'm that person. <laughs> like just only blend. because only because zero is not available. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Sometimes I'll get a one and I'll be like, ooh, this is a oh, wow, so much. Give me some milk or something. Oh, yeah, I'm. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know why my I'm so I'm just a sensitive person. That's what it is. I'm just yeah. Anyway, I guess we should talk about stuff that matters um, besides these things, which actually do matter a lot because I'm yeah, I'm super interested in what, what is going on in different parts of the world. So let's talk about this. I, I added this. OK, so for those who don't know, I will take a step back. When we start planning chaos cons, we like to just use this meeting time to do some of that planning work so that we don't have yet another meeting on the chaos calendar. Which, by the way, we have an average of nine meetings a week now, which is a lot. Um, but anyway, I digress. So when we are planning chaos cons, we will kind of chop this meeting off at the half past and then use the, pre the, the remaining 20 minutes for chaos con planning. I don't know if we need to do that today. I left space for it, but I don't know if we need to do that. So whoever's on that planning committee, uh, I will I will let you um, chime in on that after this meeting. Okay, so the very first thing on, and I missed this conversation because I was out and I actually have not watched the full uh, recording. Did we talk about this discourse thing? Did we make a decision on this? Uh, I don't think we made a decision, but we could make a decision now. Yeah, I would like to. Um, yeah, I would like to only because I do post some things there and I'm if I don't post them there, I'm not sure where to post them with specifically like the meeting summaries and also like the chaotic of the week and the monthly thing, which I haven't done yet for September, <laughs> which is on my list, I promise. Um, so I'm just not sure like those things would normally go in discourse. So should I just put them all in Slack? Yes. Or... Okay. That's what I ended up doing on Friday. Um, put meeting summary and chaotic. I should do 
chaotic of the week and monthly newsletters. Just in Slack. And then um, because we usually do post those also to LinkedIn, we cross post. So if it's just in Slack, like it won't be really posted anywhere, but I guess that's okay. Well, it won't be posted. It's cross posted from discourse. To from discourse, yeah. And I'll, well, I guess the monthly newsletters will still go in the in WordPress and still on the website. Yep. Is that right? That's where we were putting the weekly ones. And then we okay, so that will, that part will be okay. I guess it was mostly this, um, which I just posted just the whole thing in LinkedIn, the whole thing. Again. Yeah, as long as it gets into LinkedIn, it sounds okay. like it. It sounds like part of it was like discourse was providing a workflow thing for you. Uh, kind of, kind of just like that central hub where I can just link everything to it because I knew it would be there. Um, yeah. You know, whereas like the I meeting. See summaries would be in individual slacks and like the monthly newsletters over here on website and you know what I mean so it's it was just kind of like that hub. I see what you're saying. Is it worth having that for you just from a administrative perspective because if that helps like there's no harm in keeping it then you know what I mean like yeah. we'll never have a conversation there but if it serves as a process hub for you yeah, I thought it was actually more work, but it turns out it's the opposite, I think, because it does provide me that place where I can just put everything in it and link to it there. So, because um, I did not use it last week. And it was more work last week? No, no, I thought it was going to be more work, but actually when I didn't have it, it turns out that I was kind of a little bit lost of where to put stuff. So I kind of missed it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so do you just want to, I mean, for, for that reason, we can keep it alone. <laughs> To be honest, to me, to be, it, yeah. it's like, if it, you get what I'm saying? Like, we don't use it. And if it's just kind of, we could, we don't even like, we don't need to advertise it. It's not really on the web page currently anyway. Yeah. We just use it as a process tool for you. Then that's okay. Yeah. I, I actually thought it was more work for you. And we weren't getting it. Yeah, and we weren't getting much value out of that additional work. I, I think it does still show up in the quick start. I think it's an, a recommendation that people join. Let's, can, let's just remove it there. Yes, it does. I just wanted to say that because I was grabbing okay. some links about the community and I, I saw it there. Okay. But it should be an easy fix. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to confirm that it is indeed there. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you. Um, I can do that. Yeah, so so we'll consider this course as a, a half failed experiment. <laughs> it doesn't really serve the purpose that we intended it for mm -hmm. it to, but it does it did actually serve a purpose. I was kind of surprised to be <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was, but it turns out it was. I'm, so this is the second time that we've tried this course, and now we get more out of it than the first time. So we're improving. We're improving. <laughs> I thought uh, I didn't like you, but I guess I do. <laughs> I like you in a different way. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just friends. Um, okay. So we'll just say sort of here. Um, and then someone else put this uh x which i'm guessing is the old twitter is that what you meant yes well i can't call it twitter anymore but um yeah it makes your i see your face but like so we, <laughs> we uh so we obviously have a twitter account and then we shut it down for reasons of not shut it down but we just don't post to it for reasons of just the way the world is and <laughs> the people and all that stuff like it we weren't big fans of kind of this whole shift. And I just, I, it was only this morning that I was like, ah, should we talk about this again? Or like, do we still just have like, um, you know, like personal concerns against using it? Cause like the Linux foundation uses it. A lot of LF projects continue to use it. It chaos Africa uses it. Um, it's not like we have to, I don't know. It's just, it was something that we had quite a few followers. It was a, something for us to get the word out, whatever the word might be, but I don't know what people's thoughts are.
in my experience, uh, I think we are still posting on the Open Infra Foundation project X accounts, X that are still current accounts, um, because the experience is just simply that people are still still there. There's there's still community members there, so uh, we don't want them to miss content. Not that not that we are any supporters of what what went down with the with the changes and anything with regards to the platform. But if people are there, then at the same time we still want to be able to reach them. So for now, we are still using it. I don't know if this helps. It's just one more data point. Yep. Go ahead, Mary Blessing. Yeah, I also wanted to like um, <clears throat> share, like I share same thoughts that um, that um, the last week I just spoke on, right? Regardless of whatever went down with the platform, I also I also feel like if folks are there, then it just makes sense to be able to reach them there. And to be honest, um, based on experience, I've seen lots of. Um, techies, tech enthusiasts, and, and even open sourcers, you know, use the platform actively. And um, if we are also going to like maybe say, um, um, talk about like related to relating to um, the metrics in the app ecosystem, I was looking oh, through um, today, right? Um, we're talking about. Um, event hashtags you know trending right while conferences open source conferences are going i feel like twitter is that platform where um most of these things you know um happens a lot right you know uh, talking about trending hashtags talking about um people finding uh, words or information um through hashtags and all that you know is that platform that allows folks to do that so yeah um, I don't know if this helps as well, but I, I feel like we should still be able to like um, be active on the platform. And I know Chaos Africa is still very active on the platform. Yeah, correct. Yeah. What do you think, Elizabeth? Because this is this kind of falls back towards you know a lot of the stuff you do that's you know yeah. I mean I'm kind of like Georg Georg says that he's personally not using it um but he doesn't mind being there for the people that are there like Ildiko says so uh, I'm kind of in alignment with that I think like I don't really have a soup I mean I, I'm not a fan honestly personally but you know I, I'll, I'll take one for the team for chaos <laughs> for chaos um, and I don't, I don't mind, like, as far as a workflow process thing goes, I, I don't mind posting to Twitter as well. I think CoSchedule can do, like, blast to everything at once, so. Like, it's not a big, mm -mm. the overhead is not really there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, Elizabeth, do we still use CoSchedule? Um, kind of. Uh, <laughs> 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 weekly. So I would do the weekly newsletters and then use co-schedule to blast it everywhere. Um, but I've stopped doing those and I've changed to monthly. So my use has just slowed down based on the nature of what we're doing. In the last week, I I used, I just did it manually. I didn't use co-schedule um, because right now the only thing it's set up to be connected to is LinkedIn and then WordPress mm -hmm. will blast to discourse at once. So. Between CoSchedule and WordPress, I can blast it everywhere. One of those two things will help me. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Kinda. Yeah, sure. CoSchedule was a little um, limited because we're on the free account for one. So we yeah. are limited in some of the things we can do, but also um, the Twitter API, when it was the Twitter API and it broke and they put in all those regulations that also broke in CoSchedule. But I think, maybe WordPress gets around that. I'm not sure. I need to look at it because I haven't. So I will. Because yeah. I remember when we were experiencing that with um, um, Sophia, right? Yeah. 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 Um, Ruth says, I think the Zoom link on the calendar is different. Yeah, I was there for like five minutes and then I... <laughs> 
And then I think Anita was there and Hamza was there as well. And we we're just there at wondering if there was no meeting. For this? Maybe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I screwed that up for just this meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, I think so. Because I went through the calendar one and it took me to a different Zoom. It's, I, I compl okay, so here's here's my confession, everyone. I, I don't know how calendars work and I don't know how time works because I thought we were all gonna be, I thought Matt and myself and Don and Sean were all gonna be out this week, but it's just Don and Sean. So I canceled this week's meeting actually in Slack. And so I took it off the calendar and then I realized, no, just Don and Sean are gone. Matt and I are still here. So I've tried to put it back on the calendar and delete the message really sneakily, hoping nobody noticed. Clearly, people did notice. Girl, <laughs> way to go! I'm sorry. So, are there people still in that other? I don't even well, know where. People. Where did I even send people? I don't even know. Oh yeah, it takes you to another Zoom entirely, and then I think Anita and Hamza were the ones that told me that the meeting was cancelled. No, if we can, if we can wrap them back into this meeting, I am so sorry. I am. I, you just. I think you just sent them. I think you just like were logged in as you and you okay. created an invite. So it's my personal, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it looks like. Okay. Okay. So oh, it, no. yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. What a mess. Okay. What a mess. I swear I'm a professional. I swear I am. You know, it doesn't seem like it. So here's the, I think maybe the other reason for Chaos Project to get back on X2 is just because I was doing a quick search and folks from Chaos Africa are posting regularly and it would be nice to help, you know, spread that word. Because they have, Chaos Africa has 1,500 followers and we have 1,600, you know, it's just nice to cross post that stuff. Agreed. Okay, well, it sounds like we have a decision. So, yeah, let's keep, let's do it. Okay. Let's... Yay and boo, all at the same time. Yay and boo. So complicated, the feelings <laughs> I have. <laughs> Almost as complicated as how calendars work. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good times. Okay. Um, do we want to move on? Do we have any? I should I should leave space for any final um, comments about discourse or X or any of this stuff. All good. Okay, let's move on. Project ba project badging updates. That's just me. I just wanted to let people know that you know we're still moving forward with this. Um, we've the. A lot of the pilot work has been completed, so we pretty much have a process by which people can, you know, include a DEI.md file in a, their repository, um, apply for a badge, and the badge will be issued. So thanks for everybody for all their work. At this point, we're talking about um, how to move past the pilot phase and, you know, really start making this available. Um, for everyone. So that's where we're at at the moment. Challenges come in just in terms of like scale and just ensuring that we have support as needed. So maybe Elizabeth in the next project manager meeting, just on the agenda, you could, you know, just ask if people have an interest in potentially supporting the ongoing maintenance, you know, kind of the ongoing development. Really maintenance, I think, is the important thing at this point um, around project badging at the bronze level, and particularly only the scan of the DEI.md file. Because mm -hmm. if the answer is no, then that'll answer some of the questions that we might have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of doubt that will be the... Uh... Uh, the response, but hey, you never know. Yep. I'm happy to bring that up. Okay, cool. Thanks. Can I ask a question about this program? Of course. Um, I just, I know we, we 
I'm thinking it, but it's also the event program, but the project one is a little bit more, well, you'll see what the question is in a second. Um, the way that we're doing it is very much like on individual projects, but I'm curious if there's any opportunity for learning across projects. I think something that I've been interested in is a lot of understanding of the state of DEI across the broader community ecosystem. And I think this particular program is going to provide a lot of individual snapshots of what projects are doing, what they're thinking about, what they'd like to change. Um, that isn't going to give you all the details on what's going on in the community, but it will be indicative of what people find most important. Um, and I think that in itself is really just interesting learning that could happen across the community as well as in the research community. Um, but I also recognize that the program was probably not set up for that type of analysis, or at least like data sharing outside of just these individual reviews. Um, so I was just kind of curious if there is any sort of language or discussion around the program that would allow for that type of view. I mean, I guess if this is a public file that they're putting on GitHub, then that's something that could be referenced. Um, we just can't take into account any of the reviews we've done. So I'm just kind of curious if you've been thinking about that, if that's something that would be open for, I know there's a couple of folks on this call that have pursued various avenues of DEI research in the broader open source space. So I have a, a few comments on that. So as far as the process is concerned, Sophia, what we're asking is for the project to include the DEI.md file that describes their attention to four particular metrics. Our scan is really just identifying the presence of the file as well as the presence of the headers in the file. We don't actually do a review of the content in it. We don't have the capacity to do that. Um, so part of this is we're asking the community members to kind of respond and reflect to the DEI.md file if they see discrepancies in it. So we're just, we're really badging um, in the sense that this project took the time to, to assemble and post and share a DEI.md file. So there, there are no reviews like um, event badging. We Once the badge is completed, um, we will have every awarded badge goes into a table. So we will actually have the data that points to every single repo that contains the badge. So it would be fairly easy to collect all of those, to write a script that just went to the respective repo and grabbed the DEI.md file. Um, but we, ha we have not talked about that. And then holding all of those DEI.md files basically up to the light to see where there, where there were similarities between them. Um, also have not considered that, but we would have the, at least the, the available data to do something like that. So maybe an interesting research project in like mm -hmm. six plus months when we have some data. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just floating it out there. We'll, we'll yeah, come no, back I, to it. <laughs> well, because the I think that's fair because the you know a big intention is to help others think about their own DEI.md file and things that they could do within their project. Maybe not just the file itself, but things that they could do to best center DEI within their own project. And these DEI.md files are certainly going to bring forward the many different things that projects are doing to address, say, inclusive leadership. You know, I'm sure there's really a lot of different ways that that could be done. But that's a great idea. Yeah, and I also like, I mean, I, I, I said this before in other venues, but I, I like the way that it's doing that because I feel like a lot of challenge with research in this topic is that you have to potentially ask some pretty invasive questions and collect a lot of information that is relative very sensitive depending on how you're being regulated, but also like it's private, it's personal, it's um, highly related to your own affiliation and feeling. But the way that this program is structured, you're just reflecting on what you'd like to do, not necessarily revealing that, but that reflection is still indicative of potentially 
the composition, the problem, what people are feeling. And so I think it's like, it's not a direct learning, but I think it could be fairly influential and indicative of what people are most challenged by or what's what they're struggling with in their own community. So I'm mostly like, I'm excited to go back and look at it, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and just, I guess I'm flagging it now in case there are others that are also interested. I know Georg has been working with Anita a lot on related research theme. So this is, um, I don't know, I feel like this could be a really interesting source to look into. Right on, thanks. Okay, I wanna take a quick check um, from ChaosCon folks. Do we need to end the meeting or ca can we keep going? Because it's half past. Why don't you skip the compass thing and okay. just go to facilitation for next week and then we okay. can. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, um, let me just put this in here. Deferred to next time. Maybe like next, next week, because I'm not going to be here next week. Next, next time. <laughs> um, yeah, so to Matt's point, we are going to be at All Things Open next week. So yeah, I'm going to be out yet again. I'm so sorry. But if there's somebody on this call that would like to facilitate next week in my in my stead, that would be amazing. Don't everybody, you know, volunteer at once. <laughs> it's not that hard, I promise. I promise it's really not. I mean, clearly I'm doing a not great job. So <laughs> the bar's low. It's down here. Peculiar just said yes. Oh, peculiar to do it. Yay. Oh yeah. Thank you, Peculiar. I love you. You're amazing. And I appreciate you very much. And I'll give you another little heart on the chat. Yes. Um, Peculiar, we have, I, I'm not sure if you have um, been facilitating any of like the Chaos Africa meetings, but we do have a doc that will help you if you aren't certain of how to do it. And again, the bar is low. So, you know, you're, you're going to do a better job than I am. <laughs> Clearly going to do a better job. So um, let me know, I guess is what I'm saying. Let me know if you want access to that doc or, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, just reach out. Not a big deal. And this community is pretty kind, as you can tell, and very forgiving. And so <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll all work out, I promise. Oh, you have the doc already. Yeah, see, you're 10 steps ahead of me already. So thank you. Awesome. Um, and then just a quick reminder, this is the date of FOSTEM. If anyone is going to be planning on going, here it is. So save the date. And now we have about 15 minutes to work on the ChaosCon stuff. So if there's nothing else. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Georg. Thank you <laughs> for clarifying that. Because, yeah, FOSTEM isn't actually February 1st. It's the ChaosCon part. So I'm going to stop sharing and I think we can close the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Again, apologies to those who went to the wrong Zoom link. Completely my fault. And I'm sending you good karma your way for being so forgiving. I appreciate you. So those who are uh, working on Chaos Con can stick around. Everybody else, you are free to go and enjoy the rest of your day and have your 15 minutes back. So. Bye, everybody. Yeah, stick there we go. Yep.